are now listening to the IELTS podcast. Learn from tutors and ex-examiners who are masters of IELTS preparation. Your host, Ben Worthington. Hello everyone, my name is Daphne. Thanks for choosing to listen to this tutorial from IELTSpodcast.com. In this tutorial, I'm going to be offering you some IELTS general writing task one tips. So we'll be looking at different aspects of letter writing which is the task one writing question for the general training IELTS paper. So I've done quite a few tutorials about letter writing because this is a form of writing which personally I really enjoy and I still write lots of letters, although mostly nowadays they are in email form rather than actual pen and ink. I thought it'd be useful for you to have some IELTS general writing task one tips to guide you and help you get an amazing score when it comes to this part of your IELTS exam. A long time ago when I was at school, we had lessons all about how to write different kinds of letters. And it is the quite rigid or fixed format of some of these letters, which I find really interesting. And which, because of the conventions or the rules of writing, for example, using formal set phrases like I'd be grateful if you could provide me with information on or I'm writing to complain about the appalling meal I had. Uh, these conventions are still observed today. So you need to know exactly how these work. And this is something that is expected in IELTS task one general, not only in terms of the marking bands, but in terms of how these letters work perfectly. This is really important. So I hope my IELTS general writing task one tips today will help you with your exam preparation. If you're near the beginning of your work or if you've almost reached your exam date. So for this tutorial, we're going to use a mnemonic. Are you familiar with what this is? And does anyone know how to spell it? A mnemonic is a group of letters which can help you to remember ideas, facts and information. And they're really, really helpful when you're revising for an exam and you need to train your brain to quickly recall important information. So I've used them quite a lot when I've been taking exams and as well as acting as a memory assistant, mnemonics can make sure you don't leave anything out, make sure you haven't forgotten anything, so you have the best chance to score really high marks. Our mnemonic today is of course the word general, because this tutorial is all about offering you IELTS general writing task one tips. So let's look at our letters. So G is for greetings. Greetings, how to start your letter and how to end your letter. E is for efficient, how to make the most of your time in the exam and produce a great letter following the prompts. N is for what not to do. E again is for expand. It's important to develop or expand your ideas so your letter becomes real and believable. R is for register which means understanding the tone of your writing according to who you're writing to. So a letter to a bank, for example, will be more formal than a letter to a friend. A is for accuracy. In all things exams, you have to be accurate in spelling, punctuation, how you lay out your letter. So what it looks like on the page. L is for language. And here I'll be sharing with you some really great chunks of functional language. So let's start. G is for greetings. It is really important that you start your letter in the right way. So if you're writing a formal letter, you would be starting dear sir or madam. And the way to end that is yours faithfully. And you should use a capital letter for sir and for madam and then comma. And at the end, you should put yours faithfully. Now, yours does have a capital letter, faithfully does not. And again, there should be a comma after that. If you know the name of the person you're writing to, so this would probably be in a neutral or semi-formal letter. It would be perfect if you're writing to uh, a host family where you're going to stay, for example, or you're writing to a teacher or maybe your boss. Here you should say, dear Mr. Jones or dear Mrs. Green. And then the ending you should have when you're using Mr. or Mrs. is yours sincerely. And it's important you get this difference right. So dear sir or madam is yours faithfully. 
Dear Mr. Jones, you're sincerely. And this is the one th first thing the examiner will look at. It's the first thing I look at when I'm correcting letters. So still looking at greetings, we're going to look at informal. If you're writing to a friend, and this is something you're probably more familiar with. So the friend's name, hi John or hi Sarah, comma. Then when you sign off, when you finish, you can use a range of different greetings here, depending on how friendly you want to be and how well you know the person. So you could have hi John at the beginning and best regards at the end, or you could go into hi Sarah and lots of love, or something like hi Sarah and then see you soon at the end. So this is more the style that you're probably used to using when you're writing your own emails. E is for efficient. To be efficient in the exam, you have to know what to do and how to do it. It's recommended you take 20 minutes for your task one and use that 20 minutes and then move on to your task two. But in fact, we actually recommend you do your task two first because you may not even need 20 minutes for the task one. But the point to make on efficiency is don't spend half an hour doing task one. It is worth a third of the marks. That's important, a third of the marks. So task two is obviously more important. It is recommended that you write no less than 150 words. So please don't get excited and go to 250 as there is no point. Efficiency is the name of the game here. You can help yourself by learning and using some great functional language expressions to suggest, complain, recommend, or so on. And I'll be talking about this later. These common phrases and expressions are really great to master now, and it's a fantastic way to improve. So learn how to write them and use them and spell them correctly. Uh, let me give you an example, a letter of a complaint. You should be starting with an expression like, I'm writing to complain about, or you could use an expression like, I'm writing to express my annoyance with the waiting staff. So these key expressions allow you to be efficient in your writing. You know what you have to do and you're going to just do it. N is for what not to do. So as you know, formal writing is appropriate for a letter of a complaint or a letter asking for a job or to the manager of a hotel. And here you must not use contractions, which means you must not say, I'm available for interview. You should say, I am available for interview. You shouldn't say, I don't think this is acceptable service. You should say, I do not think this is acceptable. So you need to write your words in full. The other thing, uh, say something else you must not do, is use language that is too informal. So whilst in an informal letter, it's okay to use expressions like, that's so exciting, or that's such great news, in the same way that you'd write to your friend. Don't be tempted to be too casual and use expressions like, I'm going to be so happy to see you, which is terrible English and terrible American and one of my real pet hates, something I really don't like. Uh, remember, it's an exam. Remember, you need to be showing some level of sophistication in your writing, even if it's informal. Also, be very careful about using something that is too idiomatic. So some expressions, I think, are not really appropriate for an exam. Um, I was reading a, a student's letter the other day, which was great, but full of really idiomatic expressions like that's grinding my gears, which means it's annoying me. But I personally feel that's a level too informal for this kind of exam. So it might have been better to say that really is getting on my nerves. E is for expand. It is important to develop or expand your ideas so your letter becomes real and believable. Even though you only have 20 minutes on this and around 150 to 180 words, it's important to develop your letter and make it real and make it believable. And this requires a bit of detail, imagination, and you can have fun here. You can enjoy writing this. Uh, let me give you an example from one of our students' letters. And this is a lovely example of how to develop the letter, to expand in a short space of time. This is an informal letter writing to a friend to explain you've left your job and you started a new job. The big news is I finally changed my job and I've joined an international gaming company 
And now I'm working in a great new team where I can plan, organize, conduct training courses for my colleagues from different departments. It's a challenging job, but I'm really enjoying getting along with my energetic and creative peers every day, and I feel much happier. So you can see in a very few words, this student has developed the answer. You've talked about the new job, talked about what's good about it. They've included some lovely language here. Plan, organize, and conduct training courses. My energetic, creative peers. And you really get the impression this could be a real letter. And that's what you want to aim for when you are expanding. Uh, one word of caution here, though. You don't need to expand so much that you're giving unnecessary details. Uh, answer the prompts you're given in the question fully, but be a little be ca bit careful that you're not giving excess. Keep that right balance of developing, but without wasting your time or getting distracted on something that is really rather irrelevant. R is for register, which means understanding how you have to change the tone of your writing according to who you're writing to. So a letter to your bank, as we said, will be more formal than a letter to a friend. Formal writing requires a particular style, which is very different, for example. You'd need the expression, I'm writing to inform you that, compared to informal, just a note to let you know. Or, I have recently completed, which would be formal, compared to, I've just done, which is obviously more suitable for writing to a friend. So the main categories of letters for IELTS uh, general writing are formal, semi-formal, neutral, or informal. And you can look at lots of our previous podcasts to get examples of recent questions and how you might answer them. You need to show the examiner immediately you understand the register needed for the letter question. So it's no good starting to write a letter applying for a job by starting, hi there, and ending, please give me a call. This is simply not an appropriate register. You should start with, I'm writing to inquire about the position of X, which I saw advertised online last week. At the end, I close my CV for your interest and look forward to hearing from you. So the style, the register, is going to match the letter type. Equally, when you're writing a neutral or informal letter, for example, to a host family, it would be better to say, I'm looking forward to this course, which I hope will improve my English skills and get a promotion or allow me to get a promotion, rather than the correct but over formal in order to develop my English skills and to better understand UK cultural norms, I'm attending this programme which will also help me move up the corporate ladder as our company's main branches in the UK. So that is wonderful English, but would be more appropriate for a formal letter of job application rather than introducing yourself to a host family. OK, so this really matters, this register. In an informal context, you could be more relaxed. So this is another example. A friend ends the letter with, so how about you? How about we go out for a drink next Saturday? Let me know what time suits you best and where to meet. So that kind of informal, lots of questions, an exclamation mark is perfect for an informal letter. A is for accuracy. In all things exams, you have to be accurate in spelling, in punctuation, and how you lay out your letter. That is what it looks like on the page. You do not need to put an address on the letter. So you can start with dear sir or madam or your greeting. After this, you need to leave a blank line, a gap, a white space. And then you carry on with, I'm writing to inquire about, or I just wanted to ask you a bit more about. Each new paragraph, and your paragraphing is very clear here because you're following the prompt in the question, needs to start on a new line, and you should leave a blank line, like a gap, between each paragraph. When you end the letter, you can have a single line with, I enclose my CV for your interest, Hope to hear from you very soon. I'm really looking forward to meeting you and your family. And then another space. And on the next line, you want to your greeting, your, the, well, the, the ending, the yours faithfully, yours sincerely, best regards. And then again, new line, your name. So it's hard to explain that actually, but if you have a look on the website, you'll find some examples of exactly what that should look like. Remember, use your full name when you're writing to someone you don't know. This would be formal writing or maybe semi-formal as well. When it's your friend, then your first name only. 
So that's the layout. Another area of accuracy, accuracy to watch out for is spelling. We are lucky today with spell check on our computers that automatically correct words for us. But if you feel spelling is an area where you're not very confident, then take off spell check and start working on your spelling now because you will lose marks if you cannot spell correctly. And the vocabulary in these letters, as we've said in previous podcasts, is not that difficult. So you should be able to write very accurately with no spelling mistakes. Finally, L is for language. To make sure you know the key phrases and key types of language for each letter. So it's a really good idea when you're preparing for your exam. So now to learn and to practice using great chunks of functional language and key expressions that you can practice with and use. So some of these expressions which I learned at school for formal writing, I still use today. They have not changed in many years. And learning these gives you a great head start because these expressions automatically then give you the grammar you need when you're writing. So for example, expression you could use at the beginning, like I'm pleased to inform you that, or I'm delighted to advise you that, immediately leads you into a that clause where you can add the detail according to the context you need. This ready-made chunks or fragments of language, we call them, uh, give you half your sentence ready-made and you are less likely then to make grammar mistakes. So I want to share another example with you from one of my students. He does this really, really well. He's writing to place an order for something. So he says, I'm writing to place an order for a furnace for my stove. So immediately I'm writing to place an order for, and then he goes into the detail of what he wants. A bit later he says, I would really appreciate it if it could be fitted with. So he's coming into then, I'd really appreciate it if it could, and then modal verb, be fitted with a cooling system as well as a regular fan. Uh, carry on a bit later, he says, in addition, I like to order an adjustable stand for the furnace to be placed on, which should be no longer than 50 centimeters. So his functional language is quite a few words. Uh, it's giving him really half the sentence and then he can carry on, fill in the rest of the sentence with the detail that he wants to use. So he can use this fragment, the start of the sentence, and add a noun phrase, which could be developed with a relative clause. That's when he uses which or a modal verb, so he's using could be. And what I've done at the end of this blog is put a long list of expressions there. So please check down, have a look at that, and write them down, copy them into your notebook, and use them. They are a mixture of formal, neutral, informal, and I'm sure you're pretty confident on the formal ones, the informal ones, I mean. Uh, but they cover all the types of language which you use for IELTS. Uh, so asking for information, inviting, um, complaining, suggesting, all these functions, which is what Task 1 is testing you on. So that is my end of this tutorial on IELTS general writing Task 1 tips, which I hope you found useful. Let's just recap our mnemonic. G is for greetings at the start and end of your letter. E is for efficient, how to make the most of your time. N is for what not to do. E is for expand, it's important to develop and expand your ideas. R is for register, which means changing the tone of your writing according to who you're writing to. A is for accuracy, in all things exam you have to be accurate. L is for language and using great functional expressions. There you go, general. Thank you for listening everyone. My name is Daphne and I hope this tutorial has given you an insight into general task one tips. If you are struggling with your arts preparation and want to get some super professional help, don't forget to sign up for our podcasts and emails at artspodcast.com which are full of tutorials and guidance and get involved in our course the writing course and we're doing a lot of work on speaking at the moment to give you feedback to help you improve and especially now when a lot of us are in lockdown it is a fantastic time to practice writing so you're ready for your exam as soon as the exam centers reopen if you have a friend who's working towards IELTS then please share this with them and good luck to all of you with your preparation thanks for listening Thanks.
for listening to IELTSpodcast.com.